Welcome back to this special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen as we take an in-depth look at the Federation of State Beef Councils. We'll get back to our discussion shortly, but first, there's no doubt being successful in the cattle business takes leadership and a commitment to lifelong learning. Those are qualities you'll find in the Vice Chairman of the Federation of State Beef Councils as Brian Baxter brings us the story of Oklahoma cattleman Richard Gebhardt. Dig just a little bit and you'll find there's a story on every cattle ranch. And for Richard and Susan Gebhardt of the Beacon Hill Ranch in northeastern Oklahoma, that story begins in the early 20th century. In 1910, my great-grandfather bought this place, uh, moved here and um, built the barn first. And then uh, once he had the barn squared away, he built a house. They initially had dairy cattle uh, ages ago, but then switched to beef cattle and eventually switched to purebred Hereford cattle. So as my grandfather got older and uh, was unable to take care of them, Richard and I came and the, the land and the cattle got passed from my grandparents to, to us. We keep Hereford cattle because uh, they do well in the heat, they do well in the cold, uh, they're very efficient in their utilization of forage and uh, cubes. Uh, the other thing they do, if, if you're a black cow guy, you want a shot of hybrid vigor, uh, a Hereford bull will flat put some vigor in your cattle. Uh, we like our purebred Herefords uh, because of the ease of keeping of the mothers and they, they just seem to do well. The other reason we really like Hereford cattle is the disposition. Life's too short to be run over by cattle, and so we like our cattle to be nice and calm. Despite his keen eye for top-of-the-line Herefords, Richard didn't grow up in the cattle industry. His life began on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean. My father was a retired Army officer. Uh, I was born in Frankfurt, Germany, a military brat. I graduated from the University of Arkansas, was commissioned, and retired from the Army as a colonel in the infantry. And this is my second career. Actually, my third career because my second one, I'm an associate professor of operations management at uh, Collins College of Business at the University of Tulsa. Both Richard and Susan balance careers off the ranch, but they have worked together to evolve their ranching practices and improve their herd's performance. Normally what we focus on is what in, in our mind's eye is an ideal mama cow. And um, you know if we can get the genetics and the performance and the reproductive efficiency in that cow that we're happy with, then um, you know we just try to improve that one generation after the next. Traditional calving seasons are January, February. About four or five years ago we moved our calving season to March, April uh, so that we time it with the growing of the grass. Two years ago or maybe four years ago as the diesel got more expensive and it cost more and more money to roll up a bale of hay, we're using more and more standing forage here. I've reduced uh, uh, the hay cost by half. The real bottom line is I've learned to work with nature and not try to modify nature. The vision of the Gebhardts goes far beyond their fence lines. Richard is a firm believer in beef quality assurance. He is BQA certified, and both he and Susan are graduates of the Masters of Beef Advocacy, or MBA, program. Over the last six or seven years, I see a, a great threat to our industry, and I think it's important for producers and cattlemen to get involved. You know, I was looking at a number the other day, and whether it's true or not on the internet, but there are twice as many people that say they're vegetarians or not eating meat than there are people involved in production agriculture right now. I, I think it's important that we advocate on our behalf and teach the public about what we do. Don't be afraid to tell your story. You know, because I think people are more interested than you think they are, and I think there are so many ways to just weave it into everyday conversation in, in your off the farm workplace, you know, and to do it in a nice, friendly way that, that helps people understand who we are and where we all come from. Richard has served in leadership with the Oklahoma Beef Council, the Oklahoma Cattlemen's Association, and now the Federation of State Beef Councils. And he believes it's crucial to get involved with the groups that best represent cattlemen's interests. If we are only 3% of the population of the United States involved in production agriculture, it's real easy for our voice to be lost in Washington, D.C. I, I think it's important for every cattleman to belong to a state association, his local association. Reporting from the Beacon Hill Ranch in Oklahoma, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen.